Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be talking all about why it is that niacinamide causes redness, irritation, stinging, burning for so many people. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist and I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you like this content, give this video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel out a lot. Niacinamide is everywhere in skincare, creams, serums, toners, essences, sprays, lotions, potions, masks. Can we get a niacinamide tank that we just dunk our heads in? Seriously. Why is it in so many things? Well, it's an antioxidant and it's actually been shown to benefit the skin in so many ways. It can help fight off free radicals. It actually has been shown to help your skin deal with ultraviolet radiation a little bit better. It helps your skin barrier repair itself so that your skin stays hydrated and healthy and resists irritation better. And it also helps reduce oiliness and it helps reduce pore size and it helps minimize redness and it can help with hyperpigmentation. So why in the heck would something with so many scientific backed benefits cause discomfort, redness, stinging, and irritation for people? I mean, it's supposed to be an anti-inflammatory ingredient that helps redness. So why does it cause redness for some people? The short answer is, we really don't know, but there are a few possibilities as to why you may experience these different symptoms. The first possibility is that you are allergic to topical niacinamide. This is actually very unlikely, and uh, we don't see this very often, uh, so it's unlikely that you're actually allergic to it. Keep in mind, with most uh, skin allergies, meaning allergies to things that come in contact with the skin, uh, it requires you to have been exposed to that ingredient or substance in the past, and then you become sensitized to it. So it would be very unusual for you to have a problem with niacinamide using it for the first time. Uh, it's very rare, and for the most part, allergic contact dermatitis to niacinamide is incredibly, incredibly rare. The second possibility I think is far more common, and that is that you are actually sensitive to something else in the product, whether it be a preservative or an inactive ingredient that is helpful for uh, formulation overall that for whatever reason you are particularly sensitive to. In my experience as a dermatologist, many people will uh, self-report that certain preservatives are irritating to their skin. For example, the preservative phenoxyethanol Totally a fine ingredient, it's great, it keeps products safe. But for some people, they have identified that that ingredient causes redness and irritation. So it might actually be something else, and niacinamide is just guilty by association. The third possibility, and what I think is far more likely, is that you are overdoing it. Niacinamide, while it's beneficial for the skin, you certainly can have too much of a good thing. And if you scan the labels, or really just the front of the label of most niacinamide products, a lot of them are touting pretty high levels of niacinamide. If you actually go to the literature, uh, percentages of niacinamide used in the studies that demonstrated skin benefit ranged anywhere from 2% upwards to 5% max. But you'll find 10% niacinamide serum, 15%, 12%, 20%. Uh, and at higher percentages, it's obvious that niacinamide is a lot more irritating. And you know, that's the case for many skincare ingredients. You can have too much of a good thing. Not only that, if you are using a moisturizer with niacinamide, a serum with niacinamide, and a face wash with niacinamide, that's a lot of niacinamide. And it's likely causing irritation for you. So how much niacinamide is too much? Truthfully, it probably boils down to something maybe to do with your genetics, your background skin type, as far as how much you actually can tolerate. So I think it varies a lot from individual to individual. Um, speaking back to the studies, uh, studies using 2% niacinamide applied to the skin daily demonstrated an improvement in oiliness. So if you're seeking that outcome, then don't chase after serums and whatnot that are advertising higher percentages. Cause, you know, 
it really doesn't get you any better results and if anything it's just more irritating likewise many of the studies looking at improvement in hyperpigmentation and redness looked at percentages of four percent and five percent so there's absolutely no reason to go much higher than that um, a lot of manufacturers simply don't disclose the percentage of niacinamide in a product i find that people who want to disclose the percentage are people who put a lot of niacinamide in their product because they're trying to seduce you into buying the product um, uh, perhaps making you think that higher is better, but obviously it's not. It can be more irritating and the studies are not looking at these higher percentages. You know, I'm very fond of the CeraVe products and they have some niacinamide in them, I imagine at a lower percentage, but I don't know that. I don't work for CeraVe. I don't know what the percentage of, cer of, of niacinamide in their moisturizers is, but even those products, which I assume the niacinamide is at a lower percentage. Even in those products, a lot of people do report burning and stinging with their products, um, and they attribute it perhaps to the niacinamide, but I think it's really more something to do with the formulation overall that causes the burning and stinging. So manufacturers don't make it super easy for us to figure this out, not to mention the fact that it's going to boil down to you as an individual and what your skin can tolerate. And so, in my opinion, there's really no need to be using these niacinamide serums and products that have niacinamide at a percentage higher than 5%. Let's just stick with what the studies used uh, because we do know that higher percentages are more irritating. So rather than putting yourself at risk for irritation, just stick to what, what we know works. And if you do find that niacinamide in any product causes irritation, it's not it's not an essential ingredient to the health of your skin. Yes, niacinamide has benefits for the skin, but it's not an essential. You know, there are similar ingredients that also reduce inflammation, help with skin barrier repair, and help with oiliness that, you, you know, you might elect to try instead. Green tea, licorice root, soy, these all have similar benefits. So those are the three reasons why you might have a problem with niacinamide. Some people self-report having sensitive skin, and we don't entirely know why they have sensitive skin. And by sensitive skin, I mean they report symptoms of like burning, stinging, and irritation with things that come in contact with the skin. This may be due to something in their genetics that just makes them more sensitive to things, but it also is possible that your skin becomes sensitive at different periods of time in your life due to uh, life changes, changes in your background medical history, or changes in your environment. Like, for example, the humidity. In the winter time, the uh, ambient humidity drops, your skin becomes drier, it can become more sensitive to skincare products. Other skincare products that you're using may be exfoliating, they're gonna make your skin more sensitive overall. Um, hormonal changes, pregnancy, birth control, these things all can influence whether or not you have sensitive skin. But some people, you know, from cradle to grave, or go their whole life with very sensitive, hyper, what's called hyper irritable skin. Like they just get red really easily and irritated. Some of these people may have a skin condition called rosacea, um, but others, you know, they're just very sensitive. So those are the most kind of obvious reasons why you might have sensitivity with niacinamide. But let's dive a little bit deeper into a vitamin B3. Niacinamide is a form of vitamin B3, but another form of vitamin B3 is niacin or nicotinic acid. And niacinamide is what is obviously in skincare products, but niacin, if it's applied to the skin, it will cause, it, it can cause flushing and redness and irritation. Niacin is also something that people can take by mouth in pill form, and it too can cause very profound flushing. Niacinamide, however, it's, you know, kissing cousin, they're, they're virtually identical with the exception of one tiny little change. Um, niacinamide does not cause that flushing when applied topically to the skin. Now niacinamide and niacin, they can convert uh, back and forth. Niacinamide, there's the possibility that it can convert to niacin. So you may be wondering, well, is it possible that the niacinamide in my product is being converted to the niacin form that causes flushing? Well, it seems very, very, very unlikely. I'm not a cosmetic chemist, but I will tell you this. Niacinamide is very, very, very stable. And the rate of it converting over to niacinamide in a product 
has got to be incredibly low to non-existent. There are a few things that are going to influence the extent to which that might occur. Things like the viscosity of the product. If a product is a liquid, it's going to be more likely than if it's a cream. But most products that you apply to your skin, they have some type of thickener in them, making that very unlikely. The other thing is uh, the pH. At a more acidic pH, you might expect to get some conversion of niacinamide to nicotinic acid. And this becomes relevant and of a concern to people who are using niacinamide with vitamin C, like topical vitamin C serums. Now, as you guys know from my videos, topical vitamin C products, they need to be in an acidic pH in order for the vitamin C to actually get into the skin. So there is some theoretical worry that the acidic pH of the vitamin C serum could cause the niacinamide to convert to niacin and cause flushing. Um, but even that uh, has not really, it's not likely uh, that that's happening, but it is possible that it's happening at some low, low, low level. Um, it's just, you know, I don't, I can't say for sure. I can't say it's not happening. It seems unlikely. But it, you know, it's something that I suppose on some low level is happening. And it may be at a level that's just enough to cause problems for you. The other thing to keep in mind though is the nature of a niacin-induced flush is pretty specific. A niacin-induced flush, which is basically facial redness with application of niacin, it should occur uh, diffusely to the area within the area that the niacin is applied. And it's accompanied by kind of a tingling and a tingling sensation and a warmth and then goes away. As opposed to an irritant contact dermatitis that's due to maybe the acidic pH of like your vitamin C serum, that's gonna persist. That's what I can tell you guys about niacinamide and your skincare products and why it may be causing problems for you. The most likely culprit is either you're using too much or there's something else in the product that is causing issue for you. It's very unlikely that you have a true allergy to it and it's unlikely that it's being converted to niacin, the form that definitely causes flush. But pay attention, you know, if, if you have noticed that any product with niacinamide, no matter whether or not the concentration is disclosed or not, if it causes problems for you, then avoid it. And, and there are other ingredients that yield similar benefits. Uh, soy uh, and licorice root, green tea, these can all help oiliness, skin barrier function, hyperpigmentation, redness. So if you're having issue with niacinamide, you know, stop spinning your wheels and just abandon it. It's not an essential. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.